at the bottom, nothing gonna stop us. Climb to the top with you. We could be the greatest ones who never made it. Yeah, I could be talking to you. They're trying to hate, 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 but we won't change, change anything. Now, we're gonna Head of we don't the give up go onto YouTube. They do covers, and they're one of these groups that use like just random things, musical instruments sometimes. They do have instruments, but other sometimes they use like pins and saucepans and all sorts of it. Absolutely epic. Check them out, Walk of the Earth, and they only do covers. So, what level are you vibing at today? What level are you vibing at today? I must admit, I've had a, a, a couple of tough days, uh, mostly for being tired, and when I'm tired, as I've spoken about before, that's when those sneaky little damaging thoughts can sneak in if I am not like hyper hyper aware. I've got learned to be more, as I say, like the kind of bouncer at the door going, nah, you're not coming in, you're not coming in, because as soon as those thoughts take hold, it sucks you down. Anyway, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. Sit with your feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes. Check in. Take a moment to check in. Just simply noticing. And the reason for checking in is just so you notice the changes because some changes may be subtle, some may be big, but because we're always going around with our eyes open, we're distracted, we're not connected to our body, that we may not always notice them. So with your eyes closed, just simply noticing how you're feeling. And I want you to think of something, just one thing that you are really grateful for right now. It doesn't matter who, where, what, why, when. It can be the cup of coffee you're drinking absolutely anything just think of at least one thing that you are grateful for that you are really thankful for that you would miss if it were not in your life and notice the shift in your energy it might be a subtle shift it might be a massive shift it might just you suddenly feel lighter you might feel an inner warmth but you'll notice a shift because thoughts are energy in motion so you can open your eyes again now if you want just Quick demonstration. And that also kind of shows that one of the quickest ways to lift your mood is to focus on gratitude. And we have so much to be grateful for, but we take so much for granted. And I'm like that as well. I, I'm just as bad. You know, I tend to take things for granted and I have to remind myself of all that I do have to be grateful for. But here's just a side note. When we start to notice everything we have to be grateful for, we realize that our blessings far, far, far outweigh our problems. You know, from the smallest things, and I sometimes used to go for a walk and I'd say, oh, I'm so grateful for having a path to walk on. I'm so grateful that I have a, a I can walk out, you know, that it's safe for me to walk around. I'm grateful for my socks. I'm grateful for my shoes. I'm great, you know, we take it for granted. And that's just, that's just human nature. That's, you know, human nature. You know, if you want to get into comparisons, no matter where you live, no matter what kind of house you live in, there'll be people, many, many people around the world who think you live like royalty. But this isn't about blame. This isn't about trying to make you feel guilty or anything like that. It's just to show you how simple gratitude can lift our mood in an instant. Uh, one thing I kind of like uh, recommend to people is to make gratitude to practice, you know, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, or both, you know, at the end of the day, I tend to ask myself some questions like, what went well today? What did I enjoy? And we always try to focus on the big things. But even if like a class went well, I'll focus on that. You know, if I enjoyed sitting and watching the sunset, I'll focus on that. Because of our negativity bias, because we're kind of hardwired to focus on the negative, we tend to kind of like brush aside the good things because we're we're completely missing them we're looking for the big things and we're focused on the one thing that went wrong 
So to rewire, literally you're rewiring your brain by consciously focusing on the, on the positives. So I'll ask myself, what went well today? What did I enjoy? And it could be say, something simple like sitting watching the chickens because I find them really funny when they're running around and scratching around and stuff. Um, you know, going for a walk, getting a bit of sunshine this morning. And I'll ask myself, you know, uh, what am I grateful for? Uh, what could I have done differently? Which isn't about blaming. It's not about saying I did anything wrong. It's about always trying to improve. What could I do even better? Not what did I do wrong, but what could I do even better? So we, re we can rewire our brain so we have more of a positivity bias than a negativity bias by every day thinking of at least five things that you're grateful for big or small absolutely anything say in fact i've got water in fact i've got a glass to drink the water out of as i said once you start you'll realize you have more to be grateful for than not but here's the thing an attitude of gratitude it's easy to be grateful for the good stuff, yeah? It's easy to be grateful for the nice things. But when it comes to the law of attraction, an attitude of gratitude means being grateful for absolutely everything. And here's a perfect example. Your council help bill arrives. And you think, oh God, ugh. With an attitude of gratitude, you want to try and turn it around and be grateful. Be grateful that you are able to receive the services that you're paying for. Be grateful that by you paying your council tax bill or your electricity bill or whatever bill, you are also helping other people put food on their plate. You know, when you go into a shop and you buy something, for example, you may grumble at the price. But think of the fact that the shop owner, you're helping to support them. You're helping to support the workers there. You know, be grateful that you have the money to pay the bill. I mean, there's a few times over the years where I've had uh, an unexpected amount of money come through, like a tax rebate or whatever. And then a day or so later, I've had an unexpected bill, a bill I wasn't expecting. And my first reaction was, oh, for Christ's sake, I was planning on treating myself with that. But then I thought, well, actually, I'm grateful because... I wasn't expecting that money and I wasn't expecting that bill. So I'm glad I had that unexpected money to pay the unexpected bill. And it's so an attitude of gratitude is literally turning the way we think about everything around and being grateful for the things that we may not feel grateful for. Like when I go shopping, I feel grateful that I have the ability to buy that shopping. So I have the money, I have the actual ability to buy the shopping. I feel grateful that I am able to walk to the shop, that my legs work, that I can get to the shop. I'm grateful that I have access to food because some people in some countries don't have access to fresh food or fresh water. You know, I remember one night a few years ago, um, happens every time, doesn't it? Mouth goes instantly dry. Um, I was cooking and I realized that I'd I'd forgotten some ingredients and I was like, oh God, I've got to walk over to Sainsbury's. And in that second, I was able to turn it around that like, actually, I'm grateful that I only live two minutes from Sainsbury's. I probably see it from my front door and that I actually had the ability, my legs work to walk to Sainsbury's. I had the money to buy what I needed. So notice how I turned that around, you know, going from, oh God, I've got to walk to Sainsbury's to actually... I've got lots to be grateful for, that I can go to Sainsbury's, that it's right there. I haven't got to travel miles. I, you know, I have got the money to do it. So it's finding ways to feel gratitude for the things that you wouldn't otherwise feel grateful for. And this also includes challenging situations. Perfect examples just popped into my head. The fact my marriage broke down last year. You know, I don't want to go into too much detail, but the fact was, in all honesty, we hadn't been that happy. And I'd been trying to blind myself because of fear. But I say that's a whole other story. And I am so grateful now for him walking out because I am happier now than I've been in a long, long time. And at the time, even though I was upset and fearful and angry because I was scared, I knew that I would come to a time when I would be grateful. So I had no resentment, no hate, no anger towards him. I was able to hold a sense of gratitude. And so it means being grateful for the challenges because I'm sure you can think of more than one situation that at the time you didn't think you'd be able to get through it at the time, you know, you really wished it wasn't happening. Yet looking back, 
you grew from it. And because his thing, people often say to me, oh yeah, I learned the hard way. There is no other way to learn. There is no other way to learn than the hard way. We only learn by making mistakes. Like I say to people, how often when you were a child, for example, did your mum say, don't do X, Y, Z, and you did it anyway, and then regretted it. You know, don't touch that, you'll burn yourself. And you do it anyway, and burn yourself. Because that's the way that we learn. We only learn the hard way. And because of it, I mean, I would never have ended the marriage at a time when, you know, financially I was like fearful, uh, emotionally kind of fragile, going through all this lockdown and stuff. I would not have had the courage to end it. So I'm so grateful for him now doing that. And also, it also taught me, because I had to, that I can cope on my own financially, emotionally, energetically, all those things. And we often need a great big kick up the ass for us to discover, to shine a light on our strength, on our resilience, on our tenacity and on our resourcefulness. You know, how often do we tell ourselves, oh, I can't do this. I couldn't cope on my own. I couldn't, you know, I don't know how I'd manage. And sometimes we only find out when we have to, when we have no other choice. And sometimes that is life kind of saying, okay, you're just, you've been pootling along, you know, yeah, playing it safe, da, da, da. but we're going to shake it up a bit. We're going to shake it up a bit because you are not being the best version of yourself. So you need a bit of a challenge, a bit of a, you know, thrown in at the deep end so you can become the best version of yourself. Because all the things that I've been through in life have helped make me the person I am today. going through depression, going through self-harm, going through eating disorder, going through um, drug addiction, all those things have taught me so much. And I am such a different person because of all of it. And yet so many of us, we play it safe. We don't realize how amazing we actually are because we play it safe. We just do enough to get by. We don't rock the boat. You know, we kind of like want everyone to like us and we want to just like, you know, we'll keep our opinions to ourselves. We stay within the lines. Da, 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 da. That's not the way to an extraordinary life. To an extraordinary life, we need to kind of like step outside the lines. We need to discover the kind of people that we really can be. And often that takes really being kind of shook up. Another example is sometimes if I'm driving somewhere and I think I'm going to be late, instead of getting stressed, or if someone's like going really slow in front of me, I'll be grateful because I think to myself, well, maybe that's not food. Maybe that's not food. The chicken's trying to eat my bracelets. <laughs> I think that maybe... I am being prevented. Maybe I could be missing an accident. So by that person getting in front of me, slowing me down, maybe I could be missing an accident or something. Maybe it's divine intervention. Or, um, you know, something else happens that disrupts your plans. Instead of getting annoyed and frustrated and angry, you can sort of be grateful and think maybe this is, you know, it's kind of like trying to steer me in another direction. And when you have an attitude of gratitude, you stay at a high vibration. Instead of getting annoyed, frustrated, oh, I've got another bill, oh, I've got to do this, oh, blah, blah, blah. You can stay at a higher vibration, which puts you more on the level of the things that you wish to attract. It lifts your mood as well as anything. I mean, I'm like grateful for things like going out and seeing beautiful flowers. And it also... I say it literally rewires your brain so that you have more of a positivity bias instead of a negativity, ne 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 negativity bias. Negativity bias goes back to uh, primitive man when we kind of like lived in caves and we, you know, if you heard a noise in a hedge, you couldn't hang around to see if it was a danger or not because you may get eaten or you may get clubbed over the head. So we have... Although we've evolved in a lot of ways, we've still got this negative device in that we're always looking out for danger. So we're always able to spot the negative stuff. But by consciously and deliberately focusing on the positives, you literally rewire your brain. Because every time we think, little neurons are firing off. It's like if I was to think here, if I was to think, right, I want to move my right foot, then in that split second, 
signals have been sent from my brain down to the cells in my foot and it's creating what they call a neural pathway. So that would be the same kind of neural pathway for me to move my foot because I move at the same time. If I move my foot in a completely new direction that I've you know, never done before, that creates a new neural pathway. And we can literally rewire our brain. This is Meredith. <laughs> By doing things kind of like out of the norm. And this is why a lot of people feel fearful at doing something new because we spend most of our life on autopilot. It's like when you get up in the morning and get dressed, you're not consciously thinking, well, I've got to put my arm in, and then I've got to put my other arm in, and then I've got to do my button, and I've got to do... You do it automatically. It's like driving your car, you know? I remember when I first started learning to drive, I never thought I'd be able to do the gears. Now you do it automatically. So we're going through life on autopilot. And then one day you have to take a detour because you're, there's a uh, traffic, so you can't go your normal way. You have to wake up a bit. You have to come off of autopilot. And what happens when in that moment that we come off of autopilot, the brain fires up because it has to wake up because it's doing something it's not done before. Another example of this is notice how you dry yourself when you get out of the shower. I will almost put money on the fact that you do it exactly the same way every single time. I used to do, and I change it up now, so I used to do left leg, front body, left arm back of myself right arm right leg and i noticed i did it that way every single time because it's become a pattern so now i consciously switch it up i do what feels uncomfortable it's like okay i'm going to do this and then i'm going to do it and it's that kind of uncomfortable feeling that the brain is literally coming off autopilot and it's called autopilot because you get the image of pilots in a plane they're sat there, the uh, aeroplane's going on an autopilot, they don't have to do anything. As soon as it switches off autopilot, they get a burst of adrenaline because they have to wake up and start paying attention. And it, that's what's happening. The brain fires up. We get a kind of like second, split second of adrenaline. And most of us label it fear. So we get scared of change because we label that firing up fear. When actually... All it is, is a kind of, oh, I've got to pay attention. But what us humans tend to do when we label something fear, instead of actually stopping and looking at it, we'll run the other way, metaphorically speaking. So instead of labeling it, oh, excitement, or just simply waking up and paying attention, we label it fear, we decide we don't like it, and so we stop doing or run away from doing the thing. And this is why us humans don't like change, because we actually have to start thinking and we actually have to start doing something differently. And we have that momentarily discomfort, which if we actually stopped and looked at it, it only lasts maybe a few minutes, not that long at all. And if we labeled it excitement, then it wouldn't seem so scary, but we label it fear. So, oh no, I don't wanna do that, can't do that. No, that's scary, that's dangerous, da, 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 and go off the other way. And I can't remember why I got on that bit. Oh yes, the positivity bias. <laughs> <laughs> so by consciously focusing on the positive things all the little things so you know you see some beautiful flowers while you're out really stop and focus on it for a couple of seconds you see amazing clouds in the sky stop and focus on them for a second you feel the sun on your skin stop and focus on it for a second every now and again throughout the day stop and think of what you're grateful for in that moment and you are literally rewiring your brain they have done brain scans where they monitor the electrical activity the electrical impulses so you are literally rewiring your brain which is also a good way of preventing things like dementia alzheimer's etc because i was i was referred to like the vhs tape um example because it seems fitting remember old vhs tapes you used to record over them like your favorite program you'd record over every week and gradually the quality would would get worse it wouldn't wouldn't be quite so good that's what happens to our brain when we do the same things over and over and over and over in exactly the same way we are wearing the same neural pathways we're not creating any new, new neural pathways and our brain literally gets worn out and so our, the quality our cognitive function declines which is why they say things like doing crossword puzzles, 
doing things that focus on your coordination are so good for your grain grain brain plasticity and that's what they call it brain plasticity the fact that we can actually change not the size but the 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 size and amount of a brain that is functioning because they say you only use about 10 percent of your brain don't know what the other night says doing but we can start to activate more of our brain which means the more we focus on good stuff the more we actually notice and the more we attract now perfect example have you ever got a new car or a new car to you let's say you got a, a white car you never had a white car before and suddenly it's like everyone's got white cars suddenly you just see nothing but white cars everywhere and it's not that there are more white cars it's just that you are noticing them because it's in your awareness and it's the same with the same with gratitude and positivity the more you focus on what you're grateful for the more you notice the blessings around you the more you notice the abundance around you guess what the more will come to you the more will be attracted to you because you are on that wavelength Whereas people who are always focusing on what they don't have, what they don't want, or who are always moaning and complaining, never get what they say they want. A lot of it is because they don't actually know what they want. They know what they don't want, but they don't actually say what they do want. So it's, vibration is absolutely everything. So your homework, Meredith, <laughs> she's such a noisy, chatty chicken. Ooh. Your homework. And it's, when I give these homeworks, um, I want you to keep it up as a practice, but at least for the next 24 hours, focus on being grateful and finding a way of being grateful for even the things that you feel like you, you know, you wouldn't normally be grateful for. Say like a bill arrives, you know, normally you'd be like, oh God, da, da, da. find a way to be grateful. Find a way, say you're thankful that whoever, the electricity company or phone company, whoever it is, has given you the services that you're paying for. So we may moan about paying for electricity, but we'd miss electricity. So we should be grateful for having the electricity. We may moan about paying a water bill, but we should be grateful for having water. So find ways of feeling grateful. If you get stuck in a traffic jam, how can you feel grateful? You can feel grateful for having a few moments rest. You can feel grateful because you never know that traffic jam could be stopping you being in a horrendous accident somewhere there could be divine intervention there could be a really good benefit of you not getting to where you want to go in time. so just focus on the attitude of gratitude every morning every night and maybe set a, a, an alarm throughout your day stop and think of at least three to five things that you're grateful for notice how it lifts your mood so that you're on that higher vibration and anytime you feel your mood dropping focus on gratitude you can you can talk about the same things it doesn't have to be something new but as i said the more you focus on what you're grateful for the more you'll realize you have things to be grateful for but the biggest challenge is finding ways of feeling a sense of gratitude for the things that you otherwise would not have ordinarily felt grateful for that is your challenge so good luck let me know how you get on and like anything it's a practice it's a practice and if you're anything like me as soon as you set yourself the challenge to develop an attitude of gratitude i almost guarantee something will pop up that you'd normally be like oh for fuck's sake about i promise you i promise you but that is your biggest test and it's like the day i set myself the challenge to not judge anything to not judge anything as either good bad positive or negative that's when i found out we were going into the second lockdown and after i'd had a moment of oh for fuck's sake i actually started laughing because it's like yeah it's like i'm not meant to be judging anything how amusing on the day i decide not to judge anything i get probably told the thing that is going to annoy me the most and that is the thing it's to prove to you that you can do it so you may set yourself the intention of being grateful for everything and i almost guarantee that probably tomorrow morning a big bill or something is going to happen to you that is going to test this after a moment of oh 
laugh and think, okay, thank you universe, thank you God, whatever you want to call it, you're just trying to prove to me that I can do it. And that's why I see it now. Because life, God, the universe, divine intelligence does not give you a thing that you cannot cope with. So let me know how you get on.